Okay, so I'm I'm Kyle Chadburn. I'm a five through eight humanities teacher at Orleans Elementary School, part of a, a team teaching model. And I'm Andrea Gratton, and I co-teach the fifth through eighth grade humanities with Kyle. We have a fifth and sixth grade class and a seventh and eighth grade class. Um, for the purpose of this discussion, we'll be focusing much more on the fifth and sixth grade group. Um, they're the ones that we've really been working um, in this sort of badging micro-credentialing system with this year. Um, it's our pilot year, so a lot of this is new um, <clears throat> to us and to the students. And so we've sort of been just experimenting and playing around with different ideas that come across uh, our paths from a variety of um, sources around the state and beyond um, as we've tried to figure out what works best for our students. In our first year, we decided to focus on skills that we felt like were important, but we didn't feel needed to be taught directly. So the fifth and sixth graders are earning badges in geography and in parts of speech. And we designed a playlist, which is a website where they have multiple options for how they can learn those skills. There are, there are websites where they can practice, there are games that they can play, there are lessons that they can do independently online. Um, and when they feel like they are ready to demonstrate that they have learned a skill, they'll take a badge test. And if they pass that test, they will um, earn their badge, which we track with a chart on the wall. And uh, <clears throat> as the year progresses and we see that uh, collections of students are ready to move forward, there are some slightly different topics that they'll be covering. We have a group right now that have, have completed all of the geography badges that that they needed to complete for this year. And so they're moving on to map skills um, and looking at other elements of geography besides just the knowledge of locations on the earth. When students take those badge tests, um, what does that look like both in terms of like their initiation, like are, is those students coming to you and, and then the actual assessment itself? And maybe it looks different. But if you could spread that out a little bit. We've tried a couple of different ways with timing. Um, right now we're set that we see them every other Friday. So on Fridays that we have class, they have the option to take a badge test if they would like to. Um, I am more the ELA side of humanities, so I focus on parts of speech. Mine are on paper um, and they just demonstrate their knowledge um, through a test, some of it's multiple choice, some of it is um, film, um, write a, a short response, showing different ways of using um, the knowledge that they've gained. Mine being the more social studies uh, oriented stuff <clears throat> can all be done digitally for now. Um, there's definitely some stuff coming up that will have to be uh, probably a combination of digital and physical. But um, yeah, I've sort of been a little bit more flexible just because they can show mastery digitally. It's a little easier for them to do it at will. Um, one of the things that we ran into though was that we had students who understandably uh, practiced for a day and said, wow, I got really good at this doing it five times in a row, um, practicing it. And now I'm ready to demonstrate mastery, but then the next day weren't quite ready to demonstrate mastery. And so getting them to understand that just because you can demonstrate that in the moment doesn't mean it's long-term learning and getting them to understand that it does take some routine practice to get to that place where you've truly mastered the skill. And so we've had to put in a little bit of a, a teacher imposed timetable, but a lot of it is still student driven. Uh, Susan, do you have any questions? I have a couple other here, but if, if you do pipe in. Just a quick follow up to that piece. Um, I think what, what Tim was getting at to the kids, they know Friday is, is the potential badge testing time. Like, is it them to kind of look at their stuff and go, yeah, I'm ready? Or, mm -hmm. or, and, or do you signal them? And I know it's a developmental kind of age range thing as well. Um, so it is, it is up to them to just to yep. signal you? Okay. We'll go into class saying, if you want to take a test, let us know. They, some do geography and parts of speech the same day. Some will focus on one and some will say, I'm not ready for, for either. So. I'll keep practicing a little longer. That's one thing that we've been pretty impressed with is that they do generally know I'm not ready and I need to just use this time as practice time and not as badge test time. 
um, it's been good. Yeah, I would I'd imagine you talked about like the student who jumps up quickly and is like ready to, for the badge test and so to help them kind of calibrate towards mastery. And I would say you'd probably have the students kind of on the other end of the spectrum who might be a little bit more reticent to self-advocate um, and just kind of raise their hand. Um, how does that look in a classroom? Uh, well, the one thing that I've noticed is that because badge testing is pretty discreet, it's a pretty discreet process. Like they come in, they just know if, if they're ready, we'll come around and check in with them. But especially for the geography ones, like I said, that are, that are digital. And so they can just kind of grab their computer, log in and take the test. Um, there's really not even a need to let me know um, that they're doing that. And so that there's sort of that discrete quality to it that, and they also understand, I think it's important that we've, we've spent time establishing with them that this is a, a, a progression, this is growth, this, that's what it's about, it's your pace. And so if you don't pass the test, that's just another way for us to know where you need to be next and for you to know where you need to be next. And so it's not so much um, a, a pass fail thing as it is an, it just an indicator and so, sort of a, a marker for where their progress is and then they can plan where they're gonna go. Um, with next week. Great. And Kyle, the, um, the kids who are ready to do more of the work in terms of the geography stuff, but is that another playlist or is that moving into a different kind of way to, to tackle that? Um, we, we designed all of the playlists on the website coming into the year and we've sort of tweaked them here and there as we go, but we only made a certain number of pages available, uh, visible to students. And so now that some have mastered all the geography and they need to move on to the next, I've made a new, a new page visible to them so that they can access those resources now that they're ready. I'm curious is if there's a, some kind of like hierarchical structure where students, rather than coming in on a Friday and, and earning another badge um, in the accumulation of other similar badges, is there a way to like, I've heard, is described as like leveling up or like certain badges, you know, you know, once earned kind of allow new opportunities that weren't there before. Um, is there structures in place kind of around that, creating that hierarchy for learning and for students to see kind of different pathways or is there a variety of um, badges right now? I don't think we really designed it as a level up kind of thing, but I designed the parts of speech into four groups. So level one is, is the first group of, of skills. And then once they mastered all of those, then they would go to level two and they don't have access to those on the playlist yet. But um, okay. yeah. I'm finding that they are probably not going to get through level one, most of them this year, but we have them for, for several years, so. Yeah. Yeah, but some some students will get through level one, you suppose? And, and yeah, I think there are a few that will. Um, one of the things I learned along the way was that I needed to break the badges down more. So, for instance, they started with nouns, and there were three noun badges. There was being able to identify a noun, um, understanding common and proper nouns, and being able to form plural nouns. And breaking it down into three different badges like that worked really well for kids because they could see, okay, I have this part, but I need to go and work on that part. And then the next badge was verbs, and that was not broken down. They had to be able to show that they understood action verbs, linking verbs, and helping verbs all at once to earn that badge. And that's been um, frustrating for a lot of them that they might know one of those, but they can't earn their badge because they haven't mastered the other two yet. So I wish that I'd broken that one down more. Mm -hmm. For a skeptical audience who looks at micro-credentialing and badging and sometimes says it's the same thing with a different name, like how do you see kind of what you're creating as different, better, transformative, I think when we compare it to other assessment systems? Like how is it not, how is it different? How is it not the same thing with a, a different uh, pair of clothes on? We actually surveyed our students last week, just we checkpoints along the way. We kind of check in and say, what, what do you think about this? And 
Um, a lot of the feedback we got was very positive that they liked being able to work at their own pace. So instead of saying everybody needs to know this and you need to pass the test by this day, that they don't have that pressure, that they have the time to learn things at their own pace. If they're ready to move on, they don't have to wait for everybody else. They can move on. If they need more time, they have that. So we heard a lot of positive feedback about, about that when we surveyed last week. And, and we've definitely seen a shift from <clears throat> being used to a more traditional structure with students sort of um, having a, even like a little bit of anxiety knowing badge test day was coming up. Mm -hmm. And now there's still a sense of urgency. Like I want to earn my badge. I want to move on to that next level so that I can show that I'm making growth. But there's not, I wouldn't call it anxiety anymore. So instead of getting that sort of really negative feeling when it comes time to demonstrate your learning. I feel like they're in a better place now where there's, there's an excitement about demonstrating their learning and, and that's motivating them, but it's not just, I want to, I want to pass this so that I can pass it. And, and, and cause otherwise I'm failing. Um, I think that that's been a positive step for a lot of them. So I'm going to follow up on that too, cause I think that's really interesting. And I've seen another, a number of other folks, have on the wall showing those markers of progression. Um, and, and I'm wondering about that part of that, about making that growth visible and if there's ways that you can help kids to think each other, see each other as experts versus making it be a competitive kind of piece. Or um, there, there is, I'm gonna say what Tim was saying, there's some concern that people are worried about that it sets up a, a competitive classroom instead of something else. So curious about that. I mean, the way that I, I see it, for us anyway, and maybe we're, we're just lucky that it's turned out this way, but um, the, the badge wall doesn't get a lot of attention unless somebody's filling one in for themselves. And then it's sort of like a celebratory thing. And otherwise, no one really pays much attention to the badge wall. Um, and so I don't, I don't see the, the competitiveness coming into it or, or people feeling negative about seeing those badges. I think it's a good reminder for them, um, especially because we have some, what we call eye block, which is sort of a what I need type of time. And it's great for them to be able to run to the badge board and say, okay, it was, you know, Christmas vacation last week. I've sort of forgotten where I left off and, oh, now I can check the board and see right where I was, what I've accomplished and where I'm headed. Um, so I think it, overall it's been kind of either a neutral or somewhat positive thing, but it was definitely a concern that we had about how do we, track this how do we make it very visible to students but also not so visible that it creates tension or anxiety that was another question i asked when we surveyed the students last week of how do you feel about having that public and almost all of them i think we had 24 that we surveyed that day and i think there were two that said that they would prefer it not be public but everybody else said they liked being able to see their own progress they liked being able to celebrate other people's progress so it's been positive. I've explored a few digital ways to track badging too and to, you know, to award those badges and do that micro-credentialing in a digital way. And there's plenty of opportunities out there for sure, but I'm, I'm not sure that they would have the same impact, the same um, kind of community-wide impact of let's all celebrate the fact that somebody just earned some badges today or let's celebrate the fact that they're at least moving forward in, in the progress and they're very close. Cause I, I hear a lot of those conversations happening too. Ah, oh, I was almost there one more week and I'm going to be there. No problem. Um, I have one more question. Uh, and uh, thanks for sharing so much of what you're doing right now. Um, and so my question is kind of for you two about your own kind of learning journey of like clearly a lot of learning along the way, but kind of where you are now, kind of having created this work with students, like, I'm just curious, like, what are your wonderings now? Like, what, you know, what might be considerations for, for future evolution with this or, or questions you're asking now that just weren't on your radar when you started this? Um, I definitely want to figure out how to do it better. Um, I, I think we've got a lot of growth that can happen um, with this system to make it more impactful for students. Um, we've tweaked a lot of things already. One of the hardest things for us was figuring out a good way for students to schedule their workshops, 
keep track of their learning and reflect. Um, and we're still like, we have a new version of that that we're introducing today because it just, we want to sort of up the ante in terms of, of reflection and really getting them to think about what am I accomplishing during these independent work times where I'm guiding my own learning. Um, so I think there's a lot of growth to be made there for sure. And I think we haven't had the conversations yet because we're still trying to figure out this year, but next year when we have half of this group again in five, six, and then we have a new group of fifth graders next year, what is this going to look like for next year's sixth graders who've already demonstrated proficiency in these skills? And we have a new group who's never been part of this system. And so how can we use our sixth graders to, to help the, the fifth graders next year um, transition, hopefully a little more smoothly into this system.